Here we have a Ram 217.8 engine placed on an engine stand, but not just any engine stand. It's a quite highly modified V8 engine stand, which you can get at any auto parts store. But a V8 engine stand in and of itself is not a good idea for an inline six or more for an inline eight even. Reason being, they're too long for it. So we've made a number of changes. Up front, we've widened the engine stand with one size larger box tubing. So we cut it apart and put one size larger box tubing and welded in on each side. It's approximately eight inches wider. In the center, we've done the same thing, but in this case, we've lengthened it. How far to lengthen it? You want to lengthen it so it's as long or longer than the length of your inline engine so that you have plenty of base for that engine to be supported by. That's what's been done on the bottom. The most important things that have been done are at the back of the engine stand. Towards the back here, we've added a 60 to 1 gearbox. It's true, you can go out and buy engine stands with gearboxes, but again, they're for V8s, and you're still going to have to modify the rest of the engine stand. In this case, found the gearbox on eBay, costs less for the gearbox, which is a Hub City 60 to 1 gearbox, than it did to get it shipped to me. So the addition, price-wise, was very affordable. We made an axle for the center, or a shaft, that is. We also made a shaft for the side. Both of these were not supplied, and we have to make this shaft to our actual mount for our engine, which we did, and we put a hand crank over here. End result is, is we can position it any place we want to. So instead of using a lever and a little pin in lock holes, where we had to hand lever it and only had those lock holes, we can now rotate the engine to any position we want. And we could just leave it, or we could still actually use the lock pin, which I tend to do because it's just available. On the side of the engine and on the rear, you have freeze plugs, these being freeze plugs. Three of this size on the side, one on the rear of that size, one large one. I usually don't take that one out when I redo these engines. I mean, this is actually for a non-supercharged engine. They put a plug in there. And there's one by the camshaft, which is a different size. The thing to know about the freeze plugs is theoretically you can just stick them in and you would set them in there and you would use a socket that would fit appropriately and you'd tap it in using a ball peen hammer in your socket and in the center you could reverse a small ball peen and hit it with another ball peen to cause it to spread out. That's theoretically supposed to seal. Probably won't seal on a block this old. So what I always do when I put them in is I put JB Weld in the area all the way around them. Then I follow the procedure I mentioned. Then they're not going to leak. And yes, you can get them out if you have to get them out again. But that is the solution I use to seal these up so that they're not actually going to leak. And I strongly recommend you do that because otherwise, pretty much guarantee you're going to have leaks. The blocks are too old, there's little pits and stuff, they'll leak. We're going to rotate the engine over and we'll start at the bottom and give you some tips on what you should actually do when assembling this engine. And we'll put our little lock pin in. All right, right down in here where I'm putting my fingers, you can see directly in front of my fingers, this is the oil deflector for the oil return from a supercharger on the side of a supercharged engine has two screws you can see down in there. Those two screws and this deflector must go in before anything else. It's really the first step putting it back together. When you put the screws in, you need to use Permatex number two or an equivalent from another brand because those screws actually go through the block to the outside of the block and you do not want to have oil seeping from those screw holes on the outside of your engine block. This is a 10 under main bearing set for the Graham engine. What's important here is that the rear main set supplied will not fit the Graham engine. Why? Well, this is really for a Kaiser 226 or Continental, and they did it slightly different than Graham did. Remember, they're after the Graham engine. This main bearing for the rear has sides on it. In the Graham engine, they don't have sides. 
So you need to remove the side. This portion here has to be removed straight across, straight across, and all the way across, removing those. Those function effectively almost as thrust washers. You can't have them in the Graham engines. They've got to be taken off. The easiest way I have found to take them off is, believe it or not, a stationary belt sander and sand them off. It takes a while, and every time they start to get warm, dunk them in water and just keep doing it till you get done. Now, the other thing that's wrong with this particular bearing set, just the rear one, is that there is a drain hole missing from this that should be existent that we have to have for the Graham engine. So we'll look at the engine and point out the drain hole. You're going to have to drill that. Be sure you drill it to the proper size and chamfer both sides. But let's go look at it on the engine. This is the drain hole that I was mentioning that you're going to have to drill in that rear main bearing. You do have to drill that. It won't be in the Kaiser bearing sets. You're going to have to make that modification. So Kaiser or Continental 226 bearing set does not have this. You have to modify it. One other main bearing note. Just check and see that the holes in your main bearings, if any, not just the drain one we talked about, but if any, match up with your old bearings. If they don't, add the hole where Graham had it. Second step, right back here, you have an oil seal. Now according to the shop manual, you can rotate this into place. And I'm going to tell you, I can't and doubt you can. You want to take your rope seal, brand new, put it into your little housing piece here, and set that in place before you do main bearings and crankshaft. Then you go on to your main bearings and your crankshaft. Looking at the main bearings, you have one, two, three, four main bearings. Each of these main bearings needs a two thousandths clearance when you're done. So make sure you get two thousandths. Use plastic gauge. I'm not doing a plastic gauge demonstration right now, but use plastic gauge. It takes a while to set these up to make sure you're absolutely right. If necessary, yes, you could shim them if you need to, but you must have two thousandths clearance minimum. You can probably get away with three thousandths clearance, but you're not going to get away going the other way with one thousandths clearance. So work each of the main bearings carefully. Check them with plastic gauge before you finally fasten them down. Your torque rating here is 85 pounds, so 85 pounds for torque. They are originally safety wired. I've gone back and safety wired each one of them utilizing stainless steel safety wire. You cannot safety wire the third one back, which has your oil pump until the oil pump is in also. So do not safety wire until your oil pump is installed. Since the factory did safety wire them, I did, but I got to tell you, I highly doubt 85 pounds worth of torque is going to come undone. It takes a breaker bar to take those out usually. Down on this side of the engine, you'll see the camshaft. I'm pointing down there. You can see the various cam lobes. You have a bearing here, 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 and one in the very back, total of four bearings. They get progressively smaller in size, largest at the front, smallest at the back. When you're putting the camshaft in, you can have up to three thousandths clearance on that. And your camshaft needs to be carefully rotated and put in so you don't gym up the bearings, mess them up as you put them in. So you can gradually slide it in. Now, not only for the main bearings and the camshaft, but everything in the engine for oil, you probably want to know what we use for engine assembly loop. We use one can of STP oil additive, one can of it. And we use three quarts of either 30 weight standard oil or 40 weight standard oil. Not 10W30, straight 30 weight. Not 10W40, straight 40 weight. So that's three can quarts of oil, one can of STP. Always be sure to use that on every moving surface as you're assembling it. When you do your camshaft installation, don't forget to lube all your lobes. Make sure they're all lubed when you put it in.